A travel guide for Beijing, China. This video highlights the major tourist attractions of Beijing. In 10 minutes, we're going to cover the following sites. We'll start by visiting Tianmen Square, the center of the city and its most important landmark. We'll then visit the Forbidden City, home to the Imperial Court during the Ming and Qing dynasties. We'll then go to the Temple of Heaven, the symbol of Beijing, surrounded by a lovely park. At Wang Fujing, Beijing's most famous shopping street, we'll visit two culinary attractions. First, we'll visit Chuan Juda for Beijing's best Peking duck. Then we'll walk on over to Dong Huamen, a night market for exotic snacks like scorpion and starfish. And we'll conclude with the Great Wall of China, which needs no introduction. But before we begin our tour, I'll start with a few introductory points on Beijing. First, the air quality. Yes, it can be bad. On the left is a good day, and on the right is a bad day. The best time of year to visit for clean air is spring and fall. April, May, August, and September. Next up, transportation. Beijing is famous for its awful traffic, so don't even think about getting a rental car. Actually, as a foreigner, you need a special license to even drive. The combination of light vehicles like bicycles and big vehicles like buses makes for some awful gridlock at many of Beijing's intersections. The freeway isn't much better. Luckily, Beijing does have a very good subway system that'll take you most places that you want to go as a tourist. Taxis are an option, but the taxi drivers generally don't speak English, so make sure you have your destination written in Chinese. If you're going someplace far away, a guided tour on a tour bus might be a great option. This was our tour bus going to the Great Wall. The bus driver had a grasshopper for good luck. Final note on transportation, when you're crossing the street, be careful. Cars don't really yield for pedestrians here. Just kind of pick a constant speed and try to walk and the cars will hopefully drive around you. Okay, now on to our first site, Tianmen Square. Named after the Tianmen Gate to the Forbidden City to the north, this is the world's fourth largest square. It measures 440,000 square meters, and it's a great place to come to just people watch and take in the humanity here. The square is also home to several other important attractions, including the National Museum of China and the daily flag raising and flag lowering ceremony here at the top of this flagpole. If you want to see the flag raising, you'll have to get up early because it happens before sunrise, some days as early as 445 in the morning. Next up is the Forbidden City. It was home to 24 emperors. It is the world's largest palace complex and has over 8,000 rooms. The main entrance is just to the north of Tianmen Square, underneath the portrait of Chairman Mao. The palace got the name the Forbidden City because in the past, no one was allowed to enter or leave without the emperor's permission. But today, you can enter for the low, low price of 60 renminbi. Just make sure you get here before four o'clock to buy your ticket. So after passing through three courtyards, saying no to about 10 tour guides, saying no to five art students who wanted me to go to their art exhibition, and not buying about 20 books that were put in front of me, standing in line for 10 minutes to get my ticket, finally inside the Forbidden City. Now I know why they call it Forbidden. I feel like I've just run the gauntlet in American Gladiators, but let's go check it out. With 8,886 rooms to explore, a visitor can be in here for a long time. If you're just visiting some of the main squares and significant buildings, you could probably walk through in about two to three hours, but if you want to visit some of the other museums and exhibits, then allocate the better part of a day. Once you exit, you can head up to this observatory at Jingshan Park and get a bird's eye view of the massiveness of the palace. It's really quite amazing. The Temple of Heaven is a popular attraction for both locals and tourists alike. It's a park and a temple, and you have to buy a ticket to go in. At the ticket office, there are two different tickets available, one for park entrance and the other one, the through ticket, for 35 renminbi. That's the one you want to get that brings you into the park and the Temple of Heavenly Heavenness. The surrounding park is also a lovely place to go for a stroll, a sit, or to play mahjong with some of your closest Beijing friends. Chuan Juda is China's most famous Peking duck restaurant. One of their main locations is located on Wang Fujing, the main street in Beijing. It is a five-story restaurant that seats a ton of people. The menu is quite extensive, but the main attraction, of course, is the Beijing Kaoya, or the Peking duck. 
Like any good duck restaurant, when you order your Beijing Kaoya, the chef comes out with a cart in front of your table and carves it right in front of you. The Peking duck is served in a few different ways. The skin here is served with sugar, that you dip the skin in the sugar. The rest of the meat with the skin here is served with the pancakes and the green onions and the hoisin sauce. The first one being made for you by the waitress. And as an extra bonus, they also bring out the duck head on a plate, so you know it came from a whole duck. The final course is a bowl of duck soup, which tasted kind of like chicken soup, only more duck-like. And finally, they also provide a card that has a serial number of the duck that you ate. The Dong Hua Men Night Market is in Wang Wang Fujing off the main street. Here is a collection of over a hundred specialty snacks from all over China. Though the predominant food seems to be meat on a stick. But you can get special things like scorpion on a stick or snake on a stick. Some of the other tasty specialties here include starfish, sheep's penis, centipede, silkworm, stinky tofu, crabs, bird's nest, noodles, dim sum, pot stickers, pan fried dumplings, iced tea and soy milk to wash it all down, and for dessert, deep fried ice cream. And now our final destination, the Great Wall of China. And the first thing you need to know about visiting the Great Wall of China is because it is several thousand kilometers long, there are multiple different locations that you can visit of the Great Wall. In fact, from Beijing, there are eight different locations. One of the most popular is Badaling, but I think the best one to avoid the crowds is Mu Tianyu. The Mu Tianyu section of the Great Wall is located about 45 miles northeast of Beijing and is known for its sweeping and panoramic views. So the best way to get up to the Mu Tianyu part of the Great Wall is to take the cable car or ropeway. There's two, one that takes you to the toboggan, and this one that takes you up to the highest part. 65 yuan for the round trip. Looks to be pretty steep. Here we go. The rather nice thing about visiting this part of the wall is because it's lesser visited than Bada Ling, it's relatively tourist free. So you really feel like having the wall almost all to yourself. Though to walk the Great Wall, you do have to be able to take some challenging sections. There are some steep slopes and also some steep staircases. This is one of the nicer ones, but make sure you watch out because there are some guardrails. If you're not careful, you might fall off. <gasps> So this is an example of one of the staircases. As you can see, pretty steep, and the handrails, pretty low. I don't know about you, I don't know that anyone's that short. A pretty cool thing about this part of the Great Wall are the watchtowers. I'm inside one of them now. You can see another little one down there. You can pretend you were a uh, person here in China shooting arrows at the Mongolians invading. This particular tower, number 14, was actually used as a command center. Pretty high tech. Though the staircases up the watchtowers, those are the most treacherous and only for the most adventuresome. But I'm pretty adventuresome. like the top of the world. And from the top of the watchtowers is where you'll get some of the most rewarding views. You might even catch somebody getting married on the Great Wall of China. Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe. You might enjoy watching one of these other videos. Click either of them to watch. In the upper left is my travel guide for Singapore. And in the upper right is my travel guide for Taipei, Taiwan.